In this unit we're going to take a look at the vertical grid and horizontal grid type parameters for curtain walls. So in order to demonstrate this I've got a section of curtain wall with both horizontal and vertical grid lines on it and I've got that shown in elevation and I've got the type properties panel up here so we can make some changes to these parameters I can hit apply and we can actually see the effect of those changes on the right hand side of the screen. And I'll start by demonstrating these changes on the vertical grid but we'll also make some adjustments to the horizontal grid after. Exactly the same effect really but just in a different direction. So let's look at the options available for layout. We've got none, fixed distance, fixed number, maximum spacing and minimum spacing. So none, if you put it on none, basically when you start a new curtain wall um, you can put on the grid lines where you want with the grid line tool straight off the ribbon menu. If you've taken the unit from the Complete Beginner's Guide to Revit Architecture course um, where I take you through the concepts of curtain walls, I show you exactly how to build up a curtain wall from scratch using a, an overall blank panel and then applying the grid lines manually. So that's when none would be applicable. Fixed distance, this would be typically used where you're trying to replicate a real world uh, curtain wall system. So the grid lines are a fixed distance from each other and you just put the spacing in there and it sets it out. Remember that justification parameter we saw at the instance level where you can then set out do you want the, um, the first grid line to start at the left hand side of the panel or the end of the panel or do you want a grid line in the centre. So that's fixed distance. The next option is fixed number. Change that there. Hit OK so we get back to the instance parameters and you can then change the value of this number parameter. So it's currently on 6. Let's bump that up to 8. Hit apply and it will divide the length of the panel by the number of grid lines that you've specified. Okay, let's go back into our type parameters and change our layout from fixed number to maximum spacing. Now I'm just going to up this maximum spacing to 8 meters so we've got far less panels but it'll be easier to see what this is doing. So apply that. So with maximum spacing it still divides your length of curtain wall into equal panels so it spaces the vertical grid lines equally however it ensures that each panel can't exceed this width so they're as wide as they need to be without actually exceeding the spacing you define in there if it needs to then go to a fourth panel in this case then obviously they'd be, be less wide but as long as they don't exceed eight meters in this particular case then the number is determined automatically all you have to do is define the maximum panel width that you're prepared to accept. And finally, minimum spacing, exactly the same. Let's step that down to 1200. Okay, that. So again, it will equally space these out, but no panel in this case can be less than 1200 wide. The spacing parameter we've looked at previously, we've seen how it defines the panel width when your layout is a fixed distance. It's also used to specify the value for the maximum and minimum spacing you're willing to accept if you choose either of those layout types. And the last parameter in this group is adjust for mullion size. Now if I just put this panel away just for a second, and we look at this sample piece of curtain wall I've set the layout to be a fixed number and I've set this for three vertical grids so there's grid 1, grid 2, grid 3 so three vertical grid lines that's divided the overall curtain wall into four panel widths and if you look at the panel widths themselves because I put dimensions on from the inside of the mullions the panel widths aren't all equal. The two in the middle are 3857 each 
and the two at the ends are 3832. That's because the mullions that aren't on the perimeter actually sit over the center line of the curtain grid, but at the perimeter, that is the edge of the curtain wall, and hence, if you like, the first grid line, and the mullion sits on the inside of it. So the panel widths aren't equal, even though the grid lines themselves have been equally divided. Quite often in real world scenarios, you will want the panel widths themselves to be equal, and that's where the adjust for mullion size parameter comes in. So if I hit edit type, and adjust for mullion size we turn on, leave all the other parameters the same, and now it will adjust the spacing of the grid lines so that all the actual panel widths across the whole facade are all equal at 3845. This is a sample video from the Ultimate Guide to Autodesk Revit Walls online course. For full details of this course, please visit bimscape.com.